Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I follow WW and macros and calories. Happy Friday, it is a Friday so it is weigh in day. Let's talk about my week, set some goals for next week and we'll talk about this week's WW workshop topic which is coming at a perfect time because I get DM'd and asked about this particular topic all the time, so I'm excited to share it with you today. So if you are excited to give this video a big, huge thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I do a weigh-in every Friday and I upload five videos per week. Check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching, I do offer personalized to you macros and calories. This is what I follow. This has been a big catapult in my 130 pound weight loss. And I have one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things and come join our Facebook group. We would love to have you. So let's jump into my week, my weigh-in and the WW workshop topic. an absolutely amazing week. We are full in to the month of November. Where did this year go? Am I the only one that thinks that this year has absolutely 1 million percent flown by? Let me know down in the comments, do you feel like 2022 just flew by? Because for me, it was a complete whirlwind. I'm actually really excited about the month of November. I love the holiday season and we are in the thick of that. So that automatically brings me joy and happiness, but I'm really extra committed to my goals over the holidays. I want to try to hit my goal weight by the end of the year. I don't know if it's going to happen. My weight loss obviously has slowed quite a bit since I'm closer to my goal. And since I implemented working out regularly, especially strength training, that's really slowed this number on the scale. It has not slowed my body recomposition and changing of sizes and leaning out and thinning out, but it's really slowed that number on the scale, which that's okay. For you guys know, for me, the scale isn't the only measurement of success. It's actually probably the least beneficial measurement of success. I really focus on non scale victories, how my clothes are fitting, the inches that I'm losing, that's been going swimmingly well. I've been really focused on my food, staying in my calories, eating whole, real, nutritious food, getting in my protein, focusing on vegetables. And one thing I've really, really had my eye on since the beginning of the month, and something that I really wanna focus on for the last couple months of the year is getting in good quality sleep. I am very much a type A personality, so my mind is always just going, spinning, 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 and I really have no problem falling asleep. It's staying asleep. And I've said this time and time again in my videos that I'll wake up during the night and my mind starts working. I start thinking about all the things I need to do, what videos I need to film, editing, answering questions, doing macros, my head just starts spinning and I cannot go back to sleep. And I will just lay there for an hour at one o'clock in the morning and then I wake up the next day absolutely exhausted. And we know how important sleep is for weight loss as well. When we're tired, we're not reaching for broccoli. We're reaching, we're reaching for sugar, fast acting carbohydrates like chips, crackers, cookies, candy, things that give our body immediate energy. So sleep has really been a focus for me. And I've actually shared this supplement with you guys in a couple what I eat in a day videos. I've shared this on my Facebook group a couple of times, but in the last week, I've been getting a lot of questions on this supplement. So I thought that I would share it with you in today's video because this has been a game changer for me when it comes to sleep. Again, not only falling asleep, but staying asleep. This is the night capsules from the brand Stelace. So this is a sleep plus less stress adaptogen for natural sleep. This is designed to help you drift to sleep, stay asleep, and wake up in your natural flow. It contains adaptogens, nootropics, and botanics to complement every part of your sleep health, specialized for a sustainable sleep cycle. It's vegan, bioavailable, with no artificial colors or flavors. You take two capsules 30 to 45 minutes before you go to bed, and let me just tell you, this is my second bottle. I've already went through an entire bottle. This is the second bottle that I purchased. I am on their subscribe and save. This little beauty gets delivered to my doorstep every single month. You actually get a lower price when you do their subscribe and save, but you take one to two of these 30 to 45 minutes before you go to bed. And I'm not kidding when I tell you, not only do you fall asleep, I stay asleep every single night and I wake up feeling more refreshed than 
ever. I don't know what's in here that does that. It's all the natural ingredients, the adaptogens, but for all the sleep supplements that I've tried in my life, which has been a lot of them, Stelace has been the only sleep supplement that has worked for me. Now, like I said, you can order this as a one-time purchase, or if you sign up for their subscribe and save, you can actually save 25%. I will also link a discount down below for you so that you can save a little bit of money on the supplement. If you have a hard time falling asleep, staying asleep like I do, game, game changer. So this is a new permanent supplement in my life. So like I said, I've been really focused on my sleep, my food. I have been doing my workouts seven days a week. I've really grown to look forward to boot camp, even though it's at five in the morning and freezing cold outside in the desert, which I don't understand. I still very, very, very much look forward to going to boot camp three days a week. I've been going to the gym, lifting weights. I walk to and from the gym, lift weights, and then I walk the other days of the week. It's really the perfect exercise and fitness program for me, and that's the next step in my journey. Once I get to my goal weight is to really hit it hard for fitness. So overall things have been going really well. I feel like I said, really committed to getting my sleep in and committed to reaching my goals by the end of the year. Speaking of goals, I will be doing a goals video where I'll recap my 2022 goals. We'll set some goals for 2023. We'll do my vision board together. That video will be coming your way before the end of the year. But before I jump into my weigh-in, let's talk about this week's WW workshop topic. And like I said, this is something I get asked all the time, literally on a weekly basis, sometimes even a daily basis. And this is how to navigate eating out. Every single one of us at some point in our life is going to have to eat out. And that can be one of the trickiest parts about weight loss is navigating eating out. So I want to share with you some really, really good tips from WW. First, you want to choose a game plan to help you navigate an upcoming event or meal. So first, map out your moves and make decisions ahead of time. Then create a plan to make on-the-spot decisions because there's a good possibility that you'll be making some on-the-spot decisions. Save up your weekly and roll over points leading up to the event for a little bit more flexibility. You can actually look up the menu or ask the host and pre-track the foods and you can even bring a healthy dish to share. Eat a low point snack before leaving your house so hunger doesn't derail your plans to stay on budget. To create a plan and make on the spot decisions, choose zero point foods as a main to make room for drinks and desserts and start with a brothy soup. That will help fill you up a little bit and make you less likely to overeat some of the higher points foods. Zero in on low point code words like grilled and broiled instead of words like creamy and smothered. Be the first to order or use an appetizer plate at the buffet to avoid outside influences over what and how much you're going to eat. These tips are extremely beneficial when navigating eating out. Make a few backup plans for potential trickier situations. If, in the event of an if, if the host or friend insists I eat more or try something, then I'll say it all looks yummy, but I'm sticking to a few things I really enjoy. Or I'll take a small portion of each dish, but not clean my plate. If everyone is getting dessert, but I didn't budget for it and nothing's catching my eye, I'll order fruit or a flavorful hot tea, or I'll ask to have a few bites of my friend's dessert. And lastly, if my friend suggests we take the night off from tracking, I'll support her decision while making it clear that I'm going to keep tracking and I'll consciously decide not to track but be mindful and plan to start again tomorrow. We have complete control over our journey. Just because our friends and family are, do, do, are doing something or are pushing us to do something doesn't mean that we have to give in. We need to keep ourselves and our goals at the forefront of our mind. And that includes when we're with friends and family at events or eating out. We can prepare, we can plan ahead, we can strategize, but sometimes we're thrown into situations where all of that goes out the window. And these tips and tricks are really good to navigate those particular situations. Make sure that you give yourself some grace, especially as we're moving into the holidays. This is the time of year where there are so many events and parties and special dishes and even dishes that come around only once a year. Like let's Let's think about Thanksgiving for a minute. Maybe there is a Thanksgiving dish. Maybe it's a sweet potato casserole or a green bean casserole or some type of dessert like pumpkin pie or homemade apple pie that only comes around once a year. These are the foods that we want to focus on. These are the foods we want to put our points and calories towards. 
because they only come around once a year. Flaky biscuits, we can have those any time of the year. So it's all about navigating and making the healthiest choices possible, but also giving ourselves some grace and enjoying the holidays. One day of overeating, one day of enjoying all your favorite foods is not going to derail your progress. Get into the holiday spirit, but remember your goals so we can move into the new year, 2023, strong. I really like this topic. For me, it's all about balance. I always say that on my channel. I'm very consistent, but I'm balanced. I'm going to enjoy the holidays. I'm going to enjoy Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's. I'm not going to overindulge, but I'm going to enjoy it. And there's a high likelihood, a very, very high likelihood that I will not be tracking over the hol on those holidays. It's all about sustainability, balance, and enjoying the holidays. They only come around once a year. So now let's jump in to my weigh-in. Like I said, my food's been really good. My sleep's been great. I've been drinking my water, doing my exercise, but I'll tell you that my weight has been real weird this week. It's been weird. It will spike up. It'll go back down. It'll spike up. It'll go back down. It'll balance out. I have not seen a loss on the scale at all this week, and that includes today. When I stepped on the scale, it has been a long time since I've maintained. I typically lose every single week, as you know, if you follow me here on my channel. It's been a hot minute since I've maintained my weight, but I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it at all. My activity has been pretty intense this week, and we know that that can sometimes not show up on the scale. And as you also know, I don't really care that much about the scale. I'm feeling really, really good. I am putting on clothes that I purchased a month ago that are too baggy on me. I'm fitting into pants that I couldn't wear weeks ago that are fitting me beautifully now. That is all so important to me. And I also shared on my Facebook group and over on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram or if you're not in my Facebook group, I'll pop everything right here for you. Definitely come follow me. I shared that when I did my measurements, at boot camp. The last Friday of the month, we do a 5K and we have our measurements taken. I started boot camp on October 10th. Two and a half weeks later, I took my measurements and I had lost five inches. One in my chest, one in my hips, and three. Yes, three around my waist. Did my weight change very much? Not at all. But I lost five inches in less than three weeks. To me, I don't give a rip what the scale says if those inches are flying off of my body. So I'm not mad that I maintain my weight. I feel really good about the decisions that I made. It really could be who knows what, where the maintenance came from. In my opinion, I'm still making progress. I'm still seeing results and I'm still getting closer to my goal. So now I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know how was your week? Did you gain, did you lose? What are your tips and tricks for navigating eating out and the holidays? I love hearing and talking with you guys down in the comments. So definitely let me know. And if you enjoyed this weigh-in, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, because again, we do a weigh-in every Friday and I upload five videos every single week. Check out the description box. Check out the description box for delays. Please pick this up if you suffer from any type of disordered sleep. It will change your life, as well as nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things. And don't forget, come on over, join my Facebook group, follow me on Instagram to keep up with me a little bit more day to day. Happy Friday, friends. Happy weekend. And I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye.